There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge. All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list and also an index overview. If you're new to these, we go over some economic data, go over the seasonality real quick, and then we also go over some charts for individual tickers and also indexes using technical analysis. So for this week, we do have some data, some actually pretty important data. Monday, not so much. Factory orders, always a hit or miss. I really wouldn't pay too much attention to this one. And then Tuesday, most importantly, is going to be the U.S. services PMI and the ISM services and also the Jolt's job openings. So this is going to be a big mover. It has been very recently, especially the Jolt's job openings. So pay attention to those especially. And then Wednesday, ADP employment hasn't really been moving us. U.S. productivity doesn't really move us. And then U.S. trade deficit doesn't really either. So Wednesday is probably going to be relatively quiet. Thursday, usual initial jobless claims, wholesale inventories, and consumer credit. Probably not going to move us too much. And then Friday, most importantly, this is the biggest data set of the week. We have the consumer sentiment at 10. And before that, at 8.30 in the morning, we have the non-farm payrolls unemployment rate, U.S. hourly wages, and also hourly wages year over year. This is going to be extremely important, so pay attention to these especially. We want to see the labor market cooling down. And on to the seasonality. This is actually the new December Almanac chart for the last 21 years worth of data. This is from Almanac Traders Twitter. Go check him out. He also creates the Almanac books. Great books, by the way. They're like little calendars. They give you probabilities on the market, gives you data, Gives you cool little quotes, all types of stuff. So go check it out. It's called the Stock Almanac, and they drop one every single year. But you can see the first half of December looking pretty choppy, pretty much all the way up into the midpoint of the month, where you can see after 1215 options expiration, that's kind of when we start to see that bid up in the market on everything. And these are multiple indexes. You can kind of see everything going in sync towards the midpoint of the month here. So it looks like it could be relatively quiet. We're going into the fourth tomorrow. Looks like there's a little uptick. Nothing crazy. Then you can see small caps, the Russell 2000 kind of does get a little pullback right here in pre-election years, according to these red dots. And also maybe a little pullback for everything right here towards the 12th to the 14th. But no big pullback or anything by any means. You don't see any major drawdown here. Markets do look a little bit overextended. So I could see us pulling back maybe a little bit more than what this is showing, more than the average just due to how extended we are. And really it would only be technical. It wouldn't be a big pullback by any means, I don't think at the moment, but this kind of just tells me to be cautious. Maybe don't start looking for too crazy a momentum until after the 18th year. Seasonality only does so much. This is kind of just giving you a little outlook and it's just another piece of info you can add to your arsenal. So that's for the seasonality, looking relatively choppy all the way up into the midpoint of the month. And on to the setups. We'll try to get over these pretty quickly, make them as clear and concise as possible, as well as give a nice little outlook on where I think these are going. So we got MOS here, this is Mosaic. This is actually a really good play during 2022 when Russia invaded Ukraine. As you can see, this thing went crazy. It's likely due to supply chains and other factors. Basically every single commodity went up in the world during this. But now it's kind of starting to get towards the bottoms here. You can see, I mean, it's been having a pretty rough year for the most part minus this little run from june up into august it's been kind of in a downtrend now finally starting to poke out here we really need to see it get over 37.42 you can see that's this resistance right here so resistance right here but we are poking out of the downtrend line so looking pretty bullish one two three four almost five tests here just on this downtrend line now starting to close outside of it so it is confirmed to break out here but we do want to see it get over that 37.42 of course in order to go higher. So we need to get over that 37.42, make a base, fill up all this free space, maybe get back up to 40 flat. That will be a psychological level. So definitely watch that. If it can break out, that'll probably be the main price target, 40 flat, something around it. You don't always have to go to the exact penny because you can get screwed by doing that. Just make sure, you know, if it keeps going up, you just keep taking profits along the way. You're not being too picky about your price targets, not getting greedy, etc. And then obviously 40 is a pretty good shot. I mean, it's a let's measure it out. That would be a almost 7% move to get up to 40 from this area. So that's why you want to be taking profit on the way up and realize that 7% is 
a pretty big shot up to 40. So it could take some time. I don't think it's just going to get up there in a week. And then you can see the moving averages looking pretty good. You got the 9, 21, 50 all in the same spot here acting as support. Another price target you could do as well, this 200 EMA, it's going to be right here. That's always a good price target. So it's going to be like 39 area. It's going to change every single day, obviously, after each one day close. So just watch the 200 EMA. Have that be your first price target maybe, as well as make sure you're waiting for it to get over that 37.42. Or if you don't want to wait for it to get over 37.42, buy time on your contracts. That way, if it does pull up into 37.42 and sees resistance, you do have some time on your contracts to deal with any drawdown risk, or it's not as bad for long-term contracts. So that's for MOS, looking at calls, key break over this resistance, main price target, 200 EMA, and also 40 flat. Risk off, obviously, if it goes back within the downtrend line. Simple as that. And for our next ticker here, we have BMY. This is actually a pretty clear bullish falling wedge. You got a test one, test two. Looks like it didn't really reject the test three that much, but either way, it's still breaking out of this little wedge. Looks pretty nice. You have two short-term peaks. You got one at 51.74 and another peak at 53.55. So definitely want to watch those areas. It'd probably try to get up to this point, maybe find short-term resistance there. And then there's also that other point just above it at 53.55. You want to watch that area as well. If it can stay broken out like this, as well as we do have the moving averages kind of in the way, you get the nine, you get the 21, still trending below all of them. You want to see price closing over the 21, which is the second one right here. If it closes over that 21, it can get up to 51.74. If it can get over 51.74, it can get up to this 50 EMA, this green line, as well as the 53.55 area. You also have a positive KDJ to the upside, so that's a good sign. Oscillators are curling up. So it looks pretty good for a potential bounce. Somebody actually asked a question about this one, so I added it to my radar because I thought it looked pretty good. I think there is a bullish RSI divergence on it as well, so I don't really use the RSI too much, but if you go check it out, it's probably making lower lows on price as well as making higher lows on the RSI, which is a bullish divergence. So go check it out. This is BMY looking at calls. Want to see that close over the 21? Watch this 51.74 as resistance, as well as 53.55 and the 50 EMA as well. So it'll probably give you about 6% about to the upside if it can get up there. Obviously, it could take time. Just because we do these every week doesn't mean your price target's going to get hit in one week. So, I mean, we just had a play on WFC that didn't even play out the week after we were looking at it. It actually did it the week afterward and it just ran heavy. Wells Fargo did amazing the past couple of weeks. So it just took a week. So even though we're reviewing this this week, it could chop out, stall out, maybe pull back and back test and then run the, the week after. So just keep it on your radar, buy time on your contracts if you have to, deal with any drawdown risk, give it time to fart around at lows. That's what you want to do. More time on your contracts, the better for options. So BMY, looking at calls, be patient. Make sure it stays broken out. Obviously, if it starts going back within the line, probably think about an invalidation level, main invalidation level, probably under 48.25. If it starts breaking under those lows or this trend line support, it's probably going to be no good anymore. It'll probably keep trying to trend lower. So just watch that level as well as your short-term resistance points. If it gets over this 53.55, that's a pretty good shot higher. I mean, this is like a big sale imbalance area. There's a little gap right here. So if it can get over that, big upside potential. And next, we're looking at BABA. So last week, or I'm sorry, maybe it was a couple weeks ago, we did have this on the list because at this quadruple seven support level from over here. And you can see it bounced pretty good for a couple of days. So you probably could have gotten a nice two-day swing trade on this or some type of day trade just off these little bars right here. So there's a nice little counter trend reversal. It didn't get up to our 8077 gap though, which I was looking for the gap resistance as a price target. But you know, in this market, you just gotta be quick. I mean, if it gives you a quick bounce like this, just take the profit, honestly. And just make sure you're paying attention to the closes. If it starts not looking as bullish on the close, like if it's not looking like these bars or if it's just not looking that great, it could be good to just go ahead and take your profit or cut whatever you gotta do. Cause it could be trying to make a lower high to go lower, especially if it's trending under the moving averages like this you can see it's just been under the nine and the 21 so if you're going to go counter trend and buy down here you want to be selling at the moving averages as well as looking for a close over these you want to start seeing price closing over these for a classic uptrend signal and baba just hasn't been able to do that yet but now it's at an even lower spot. Look how far price is away from the nine EMA and also the 21. This is a very far extension below the moving averages. So you want to see it pop back up here, maybe come back up for a mean regression. That'd be nice. And you just sell again at the, you know, around the nine and 21 EMA area. It looks like there's a 7468 support here. I have marked this little red zone, but I don't know where this one came from. Let me see if I could zoom out and we can find it. 
Okay, yeah, it's this base right here, this November 2022, and also this little base low right here. That's probably what we were watching. You might want to see Baba get back above that. If we go over to it, this is the base right here. You got a short-term bottom, short-term bottom to gap up. So this is that 70, 74, 68. So we want to see it get above that, and that will probably have some pretty positive momentum. It looks like this Friday bar it's pretty nice. It looks like it's trying to signal a potential bounce or some type of reversal. But obviously, it probably need to get over that 74.68 as well as get over probably this little candle high right here. And I can start filling up that free space. And then overall, I mean, you probably want to watch the lows of these little candles from when we were watching it a couple weeks ago. It's going to be at 76.56 overall. I mean, that's probably the max high I could see for right now. If it can get over the 7656, there's that triple, or I'm sorry, the quadruple seven level above that. So those are the two levels of upside I would be looking for. Risk off just because, I mean, probably keep it conservative. Keep it under 7212. If it starts busting under this wick low of this specific daily bar, might be time to, you know, just look at something else or maybe wait for it to get back over again if it starts breaking under this. So that's for Baba looking at calls. Just be cautious under a pretty good downtrend as well as under some just some short term supports as well. Want to see it get up back over that 74.68. And last but not least for our individual tickers, this is going to be a short or a put trade. This is Boeing. This is a big rally based drop zone. So last week we were looking at a rally based drop zone on Roku as well, but it was able to blast through that. Obviously Roku was more consolidated. It kind of had like a little flag and we needed a little bit more confirmation from it before trying to go short. And it didn't even give us a chance to do that because on Monday it instantly broke out. It gapped up. It had a big morning in the pre-market as well. So it was kind of off limits for me to begin the week. So I didn't take any shorts on Roku or Shop last week. And I did mention you probably want to wait for like some type of one day bar signal to show you that it's re reacting to supply or it's going to reject. And it just didn't do that. And it broke over the invalidation levels, had a really good week for the bulls. So you can look for shorts in this market, but you want the right signals. And we didn't have the right signals last week. So I didn't take any of them, but it's always good to keep it on your radar just in case, especially when the market's getting this overextended. You got the indexes up near resistance points, 52 week highs, everything you could think of. And when we start getting up here, hedges start getting cheaper and puts start getting cheaper. So the cost for insurance is cheaper and it's a pretty good deal. That's why it's good to maybe have a one or two shorts on your radar just in case the indexes do pull back because then the broad market will probably start trying to pull back as well. Boeing this week, I want to see a pull up into supply. That's going to be at 237.50. So if we can get up to 237.50 and find a rejection point off that, I'd probably try to come back down to this 230 level. And another thing for Boeing here, you can see it's very overextended over its 9 and 21 EMAs. It's just been in a crazy uptrend. And sometimes when price gets a little bit overextended over these 9 and 21s, it needs a little mean regression to come back down, let price catch back up to the moving averages and kind of just stall out a little bit. So I'm not necessarily saying Boeing's just gonna totally collapse at this level. It could probably just be a short-term pullback if it can get up to this 237.50 supply. It's also a rally-based drop zone. So just keep it on your radar if it can get up there. And as well as the maybe the Dow Jones industrial average, if that index starts pulling back and maybe see a rotation out of it for some reason, or really if you see any broad market weakness, I mean, this could pull back even without hitting supply. So just make sure you're paying attention to those indicators as well. But I do like this if it can get up to this zone. And then you start looking for resistance for a short-term pullback, nothing crazy. I want to see it get back down to 230 maybe, maybe even the one-day nine EMA. And at that point, I couldn't project it any lower because I'd have to see it break the one-day nine EMA. So the one-day nine and also the 230 are probably just the lowest I'm looking for right now, assuming it can get a pullback here. But just make sure you're waiting for it to get up here first. Wait for it to get up into supply or wait for some type of weakness in the indexes. If it starts taking out the low of Friday, so if it starts taking out 231.38 as well as 230, that's a pretty good signal to reverse down, head into the nine EMA. So either wait for it to get up to the supply and start looking for resistance up there or wait for it to flush under the 230 or the 231 area, which is Friday's low. And those are the two easiest signals to look for some type of reversal and as well as not get stuck in the middle here. So that's for Boeing, looking at puts. Like I said, just be patient. Either wait for it to get up into supply, a few more points to the upside, or wait for it to start breaking under Friday's low as well as this 230 maybe. All right, and on to the indexes. For SPY last week, we were focused on this 453.67. Obviously, it had broken out. So this was Friday's close on the 24th. So we were briefly over it. We closed over it relatively bullish. 
And I just mentioned you probably want to watch 453.67 as a back test level, and you wouldn't want to get too bearish until it started breaking under that. And the max upside I could see was the 459.44, which is obviously this peak right here. And we were able to hold the 453.67 back test very cleanly. Obviously, it just comes from right here. It's as simple as that. You got a wick off of right here, a nice wick off of right here from Thursday. And we pushed all the way up on Friday to 459.44. So it got the max price target to the upside and wasn't able to break under that 453.67 focus level to the downside for bears. So it was just a strong back test level as well as QQQ did the same thing off 388. But now we're actually a little bit overextended, I guess, for the most part. We weren't able to close over that 459.44 on Friday. So we will need to see some type of close over that. And then there's one more level above that, just a few more points. It's the March 2022 peak. It's at 462.07. And that's coming all the way from over here. This is where we peaked out and just totally shit the bed in 2022. So that's going to be a huge level to clear. It's also a little supply zone. So 462 is obviously the max high I could see this week. If it can get over that 459.44, which it kind of had a little bit of trouble on Friday, you can see it rejected off it initially and then it just kind of came back up. So it's just a small stall out, nothing crazy. I definitely wouldn't just ape into puts here just because you saw this little one point rejection off 459.44. I need to see way more evidence. You got a really nice bullish bar here. So got to be really careful. But this 459.44 could turn into something if it starts stalling out too much and it keeps failing to you know break over that for a couple days obviously it could stall out here try to pull back into 453.67 and the max low if it does that just the same 453.67 so that's your trading range the 453.67 back test that we focused on last week as well as the 459.44 max high also this previous 52 week high that we were focused on last week as well so uh with a max upside of 462.07 so your resistance is here 459s max peak at 462 if it breaks out of that with a max low of 453.67 if it rejects. So I got to look at all scenarios, bulls and bears, because it's the market. Anything could happen. That's why you wait for your confirmations. That's either going to be a break over this resistance or some type of rejection signal on the one day or maybe a good one hour bearish engulfing bar off the resistance. Something showing you evidence that we're going back down to 453.67 before you, you know, just go insane into puts. So that's the levels, guys. 453.67 max low if it sees downside and 462.07 for upside. I just can't see higher than that 462 for now. You know, if it does get over that, you could probably start looking for more, obviously. Uh, you need to zoom out for that. There's an all-time high of 479.98. So, And then there's looks like there's a little peak right here at 473.20. So that could be a level of focus. But right now... Need to see it get over that 462.07 to even start thinking about that. And I really don't feel like it's going to do that this week, but we'll see. You never know. It's the stock market. And on to the QQQ. So last week we were just focused on this 388 level. And I mentioned it could just be a good back test level. You could day trade off and be able to go long off of. And I basically just followed that all week. You can see we really didn't do much. Here's Monday. And then this is the highest we went it was on Wednesday up to 394. And we kind of just chopped after that. If I go down to the 15 minute here, you can see that 388 level was great for day trading. I mean, it kind of pulled into a little 30 cents short right here, had a nice rip, pulled into it on Tuesday, another nice rip. General area right here as well, nice little push to the upside, had a nice gap up on Wednesday. So this 388 back test that we were focused on last week was really good for day trading this week, which is all I was focused on for trading QQQ really being able to buy off the 388s and also just kind of staying a little bit more bullish above 388 just because it's a really good back test level and we actually broke under it briefly on thursday it looked like we could have gone lower but then friday when jerome powell came out he really wasn't that aggressive about loosening financial conditions he wasn't really saying much about the yields going lower he didn't really seem like he was too concerned about any of that maybe he just didn't want to move the market but he did anyways people took it optimistically and we had a pretty good day on friday like literally all like the zombie companies, all your high growth techs, all types of companies, just even like trash companies, everything kind of ran. I think people are looking for those high beta names because the indexes are kind of lagging, right? I mean, you got QQQ stalling out here. Mag7 already had a great run. Uh, Spy kind of had a pretty good week, but obviously it didn't really go beyond maybe like a 1% move. And then you got these high growth names, high beta names going 10, 14, 15% to the upside. So 
people are looking for more movement elsewhere because volatility is so low, indexes are slow, and you're kind of starting to see that volatility in the small mid caps. But for QQQ this week, it's the same thing. Same story. We really didn't close that much different from here's last Friday's close. It was at 389. We closed at 389.94. So it's really unchanged. 388 is still the focus. This little one day bar does look pretty good for a little push up. Obviously, I couldn't really see higher than that 394.14. So if it did decide to push up, that's probably the highest I could see just for right now. But as long as it's staying over this 388, I, I kind of have to stay bullish. And you could see. There wasn't a single close under the 388 last week. Even on Thursday, it closed right here at 388. Even on Friday, and you can see it dipped under both Thursday and Friday, we still remained closed on the one day over 388. So that's the important context behind this. Even though it dipped under it, that doesn't mean anything. You could catch a short-term move, short-term scalp to the downside under 388. And that's about it because it looks like it just closed right back over. So the one-day close under is extremely important before you start flipping bearish and make sure you wait for that. And this is kind of proof because we didn't get a single close these past couple of weeks under this, not even on this bar. And we dipped under it right here. And you did have one close under it right here after the rejection. And then it kind of stalled out. But either way, regardless, if it does the same thing and just closes under and stalls out, you need to wait for that 388 close under before being too bearish. Probably even wait for it to get to the gap area. That's all I can see for this week, just 394.14, which is the Wednesday peak from last week. And I'll need to see a break above that to really project any higher. There's obviously a 1.272% Fibonacci level at 439. So that's an area you could watch after that. And that's about it. So just pay attention to 388. Wait for the close under if you want to be too bearish. Otherwise, it looks like it's trying to push up. You got the 9 EMA right here. It's a higher low potentially, and it could just push up to the short-term resistance right here. So that's for QQQ. Just be careful. Stay bullish over 388. Wait for the close under before getting bearish. And last but not least, going on to the VIX. So last week, we were focused on that 1273, I'm guessing. This has kind of been the focus the last couple of weeks. This 1273. So we closed under that, and I mentioned I could see it maybe popping back up over that to kind of fake everybody out because he had a little bit of capitulation here. You had volatility closing at 52 week lows. And then Monday, actually, it went all the way up to 1325. So if I go show you here, it did shoot back over the 1273 like I expected it to. So here was last Friday's close. And I mentioned in our video last week that I could see it just shooting back over to kind of fake people out. And in order for them to keep taking the market higher, they kind of do have to bring volatility higher. You need to see it go back up, kind of fill these gaps down. And it makes it easier for them to kind of pump the market up when they have a big gap in the VIX like this. And then they can just crush volatility and that takes the markets higher. So that's kind of why I expected it to shoot back over. I need to see more signals for it to expect really any crazy move in volatility. And obviously we did get like maybe one or two days closing above 13, uh, but it really wasn't anything special. There really wasn't any follow through. You can see we have one close over 1273, which is our triple bottom lows right here on Wednesday. And it actually ran up to 1340. There was uh, just a little bit of volatility, I guess. I mean, there were small pullbacks in the market. If we go look at the 15 minute on SPY, there was like kind of like there's a pullback here on Tuesday, a big one. Uh, VIX actually ran up a little bit on that. And then VIX here on Wednesday, uh, I mean, this thing gapped up and filled the whole gap down. So there was pullbacks in the market and you could make money on puts and volatility did increase a little bit, but it wasn't anything significant as well as we didn't get that close under 453.67. So it's kind of the same thing this week. Like we closed at 1240s last week. We closed at 1262 this week. I kind of feel like it will need to get under the 1240s completely for the market to kind of boom higher than this impulse candle it already has from Friday. So we need to see the break and close under that. And then obviously we'll need to start closing back over 1273 again, uh, probably for a few days at least, at least one good close over it. And that could send volatility higher up to the 1410s. But you are at a stall out point here, guys. Volatility is kind of at a stagnant level. I mean, it's at 52 week lows. You got people loading up insurance at the cheapest levels in a really long time. So that could be why it's kind of stalling out here and you haven't just seen a straight flush down to the 2019 to 2020 lows, which is at 1142. So you have had a week of stall out here after basically a whole month of volatility crush. So just keep watching that 1273 guys, make sure you wait for your volatility to start closing back over that before getting too bearish in the market. 
obviously you had a fake out here. Wednesday it closed back over. You had one good push up to the 13s, and then it was just another VIX crush. So you do want to see good evidence before making any crazy decisions. Maybe one, two, three, four good closes over 1273 can give you a good signal the volatility's headed back up. As well as pay attention to the moving averages. You haven't had a single close over the nine EMA on the one day, probably since I said this October 27th on the Friday. So it's still just trending under. You see this big wick here? This is actually a fake wick. Did not signal really any real volatility on Tuesday. So I think it was a glitch or something. So don't pay too, too much attention to that. Just know that price is still trending under the nine. It's still closing under the nine. So it probably needs to see that close back over the nine is your first moving average right here in order to start going higher otherwise it's going to keep following the trend guys it's just like a stock i mean the vix falls moving average is pretty good even though you're not buying vix shares or anything like that it does kind of move uh, opposite to the market and as well as there's probably computers programmed to you know trade really vix options or spx puts spx calls based off the vix because it's connected spx options are connected to the vix so it's going to follow moving averages. It's going to follow support kind of as well. And there's evidence of that. Really any volatility extreme point, just pay attention to. And the closest one right now we are to is 1273. So we need to see it getting back over that. If you want to see volatility higher as well as keep seeing this trending under the nine EMA in order to go lower down to the next low. But this 1142 is the lowest I could see it if it does want to keep going lower. And who knows how long that will take because it's already so low. So that's the video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our XJ's YouTube channel. I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up, sent out. I love you guys and I'm out.